In this feature series, sponsored by Cisco, we've been exploring the case for service provider transformation via new technologies, in particular software-defined networks, SDN, and network function virtualization, NFV. In this final installment, we're asking some experts, first, having transformed, what will service providers be able to do that they couldn't do before? And secondly, what might service provider business models look like in 2025? Here's Wind River's Charlie Ashton. One of the benefits of, of SDN plus, plus NFV is that it, it very significantly accelerates how quickly service providers can turn up a new service, can instantiate a new service. You know, whether they just wanted to do some, some limited focus group trials to see if it's effective, or whether they actually want to deploy it for, for their customers. And that's very important because it allows them to react to opportunities to perhaps spin up a new service that's only valid for a few days. Perhaps it's related to a sporting event, for example, or something else. Perhaps it's related to a market trend, and they can very quickly spin that service up and offer it to their consumers rather than having to wait you know, weeks or months to provision you know, dedicated physical equipment and then run the risk that actually that service isn't going to be popular and then they've got a bunch of wasted equipment sitting around. But where it really gets interesting is when you start taking these dynamic pieces of software and the APIs you've built and start exposing them to your partners and your end users. So if you think about some of the interesting mashups we've seen on the web where you combine something like a hotel service with a mapping service or a database service with a online gaming service and you get these these interesting combinations that are enabled by open APIs. Now combine those open APIs, this on-demand compute networking capabilities with what users can come up with and that's where you unleash real innovation. People mention agility a lot too. Well, I think there's a couple of things that are going on. I think there's a uh, a bit of an overemphasis on the term agility. I think uh, when people use it these days, they ought to be forced to define it. Um, so let me define it uh, from my perspective. Um, my belief is that agility is when the service provider is able to respond to customer needs in a timely manner. That doesn't mean uh, the manic pace of the internet, but that does mean that they're being responsive and then they're not taking 18 to 24 months to respond. And what does the technology do to the way players might choose to interact with each other as well as customers? Here's Mark Grayson of Cisco. I think moving forward, we, we, I guess we see this, this blurring of the boundaries then, to, to your point. Um, maybe not just technology-wise, but organization, organizationally, and you know, whereas today there's a nice demark between these organizations. Moving forward, that's maybe not the case, so, as we expose services directly from the access layer. Um, and so I think you know, the future is going to be about blurred boundaries, and so that's going to be blurring between indoor and outdoor, core and RAM, licensed and unlicensed. Um, and, and I guess that's going to be the, the thread moving forward that you know, these previous silos that we've operated in, uh, virtualization just tears them apart, and now we're operating in this cloud environment where there are no, no boundaries, and we all need to work together to, to, to achieve you know, a, a common business outcome. Okay, so capabilities demarcated with fewer boundaries. What will telcos do with those? It actually always surprises me at conferences like this and in conversations with service providers how little they talk about new services. You know, NFV was supposed to be about really two things, right? One is making more money, which fundamentally is through services, and the other one is saving money, which is all about OPEX reductions. 99% of the conversations that you have today are about the OPEX reductions. Um, and I don't know if that's because that's just where the service providers have to focus because you know, they've got such ROI issues that are immediate today, or whether they're keeping the, their thoughts on new services secret and confidential to themselves because they recognize that really that's their competitive advantage going forward. But it's always interesting at these kind of events, nobody's talking about new services. So one of the use cases that I've heard a lot about here at the show this week uh, has been virtual CPE virtual customer premise equipment. Being able to put a physical device out at the customer premise, particularly an enterprise customer premise, and then be able to instantiate multiple types of services at the edge. So the simplest example is encryption. Uh, being able to provide encryption technology and other security technologies at the edge so that the uh, enterprise knows that their information is being transmitted securely. So SDN NFV can be thought of as just the start, not an endpoint. The 
first baby step of identifying a piece of functionality where we can apply some new technologies, the NFV to harness low-cost compute and SDN to harness centralized control to start moving down this, this path. I think in many cases, you know, the first phase of NFV really just revolves around virtualizing functions that today are implemented in, in physical equipment. So you virtualize a router, you know, you virtualize a firewall, you virtualize a VPN. I think once we've got the basics done there, then maybe we'll move to a model where actually, actually you're virtualizing an application or you're virtualizing a service. And, and the underlying architecture of that application or that service will be, will be different simply because you're taking a whole new approach to designing it. And here's the hard one. What will the world look like in 2025? It's hard to predict 10 years out, but if we look back a little bit, I think we see some very interesting things going on. First, with personal computers, we saw that closed systems given by particular vendors aimed at particular verticals have been replaced by software running on open hardware platforms. We saw the same thing with the smartphone and apps, replacing a whole pocket full of appliances with applications running on open phones. With the cloud revolution, we saw low-cost compute and storage being available as utilities. All of those have unleashed tremendous innovation. When we talk about SDN and NFV, that's the first step of applying this innovation to the telco network. And it's not just about reducing costs in terms of OPEX and CAPEX, it's fundamentally about changing how they're going to work, moving from the methods of waterfall development, which are very long development cycles followed by very long test cycles, to much shorter cycles that involve the customer. Moving from monolithic pieces of software to functions built from pieces of components with open APIs assembled as needed. It means moving away from being a very slow uh, traditional telco to being a very fast, much, much more like the over the top guys. So we don't know exactly what the services are gonna look like, but we know in order for them to survive what they have to do in terms of changing how they build and deploy services. What about business models? For instance, virtualization seems to open up an aggregating role for a small cell third party network provider. Certainly virtualization enables that level of disruption from a, from a, a business model perspective, a new, new sort of neutral host type provider coming in uh, and providing that, that uh, point of connectivity between you know, the, 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 the venues and the service providers and so so that that certainly is you know we've seen that in small cells in in sharing networks already when there are um, intermediaries um, looking to scale businesses and and i guess looking forward in terms of virtualization what we see that moving forward has been a viable approach to to accelerate this market almost a necessary approach um i think for, for some of the scalability issues, um, because we've got to recognize that, that if we're saying the telco needs to serve the venue, um, maybe it doesn't have the competencies and it would then look to a third party uh, who has a particular focus on, on, on hospitality, on retail, on transportation. And so maybe we get th those vertical uh, integrators who are bringing then value to the venue and then accelerating uh, the services. Yeah. There's also a notion, does, do the operators go back to being more of a utility model where they're only providing connectivity and all services are built over the top? Or does it continue to be like it is now where they're providing both connectivity and those services? I, I tend to think it's going to be more of the over the top running over fairly simplistic pipes and that's going to, that, that fits much more with the model we're seeing in, in the cloud. So in summary, whatever happens, NFV will be there. NFV and SDN are not the, the end game. They're just the first step into moving into a software-centric world of software-centric services running on open compute platforms. So in that sense, it's absolutely necessary. Whoever is running it, whether it's a combined monolithic operator providing the connectivity as well as the services, or if it's a separated model where you have one utility providing connectivity and then over the top. In either case, the way to harness modern innovation in computers and software is with these models of SDN and NFV.